Hey guys, it's Chris, and today we're going to be doing a review of the Anden Star AD207 digital microscope camera. I broke my dag on glasses, so I'll have to get rid of those. There we go. Um, this was uh, actually a recommendation from Keith. Thanks, Keith. I love this thing. Uh, this is $99. There are uh, various different models of this technology. For the one that I purchased, it's the cheapest one that they sell. I'm going to go over the features, what it's got, what it can do, why does it have a remote, um, how does it work, is it cool, whatever. So, for example, underneath, I just have a VIA uh, SATA card. It's just an old PCI card from a PC that I use. And you can toss it underneath. Uh, but before we get into this, let's get into uh, how it works. So, turn off. There, goodbye. So it comes with a little three button. It has a plug in the back, right? It has two, two lights right now. They're LEDs and they're just on because I turned the display off. Um, it has its own power supply for the lights. It's all part of this uh, little thing here. This has a standard uh, USB. Right now it's, it's plugged in to the Amiga XL on the Dell monitor, so that's powering it for now. Uh, power on wise, it comes on really quick. It's ready to go. Uh, it has an adjustable back there's a little locking tab right here you unscrew and then you can lower and raise this to get as close as possible don't forget to tighten that back up there's also a collar down the bottom here where you can loosen up I haven't touched it this also pivots there is a bolt here on the side you could pivot this but I don't really find the need to do that because the this can also tilt for you you can you can loosen this bolt a little bit and tilt the whole assembly if you wanted it further up for more uh, range of travel. It does come with these two little spring-loaded clips which can screw into here to hold parts down, but they're real flimsy and they're kind of too small and narrow in the way of what I'm doing, just doing Amiga board repairs or Mac board repairs or whatever. Uh, you can power this by any five volt 2 amp is what it calls for. I just got it in a 5 volt 900 milliamp right now and it works fine. This is just a third party adapter because the one it came with was a Japanese 100 volt. Uh, the little two prong ones. So when you hook it up you are brought with uh, this button. This is power. Of course you press it everything goes off. These other ones are for these lights. You can uh, turn the brightness down or turn the brightness up. Now I have a tremendous LED overhead so the brightness uh, comparison is not going to be as good as when you use this at your house if you choose to do so. So let's get into some of the features. The remote itself, let's put something on here so we can see. So right now I'm going to zoom in on the VIA chip. Now you can see this VIA is actually, let me use a Q-tip for reference size. I am on the chip as you can see right here but look how big this q-tip is on the top there's also right now I think I'm in the yeah I'm in the so I'm gonna leave the q-tip here for reference whoops on the right hand side so you can see here the q-tip sitting right here and what we see on the screen turn that a little bit so you can see better so on the remote I can press up and it'll do a times two digital zoom and I can even go times four and that's pretty daggone clear if for some reason it comes out of focus you can rotate the knob and do your clarify you can see how it's blurry and then we can bring it into crystal clear focus if you needed to get closer you can undo the locking ring in the back and rotate the screws down and it will go blurry for a second. Lock your cam again, and then uh, rotate the focus knob the other way to bring the part into clear focus. 
Now, the closer you get, it's not going to be super clear, but that's the tip of the Q-tip we were looking at earlier. So you can get a reference size of how close this thing can do. Uh, I'll do another reference, the tip of a Bic pen. That is the tip of the Bic pen. And what we can do is, I usually just have been leaving it all the way to the top because the digital zoom just works perfect and it gives me more room to work with the lights on the bottom to focus them you know as you need so to provide you with the best uh, viewing clarity so with the tip of the pen here next to the via chip as you can see which is super small down there maybe you can see that let me how about you center this Chris that's pretty good all right uh, there's other functions you have a menu function where you can go through your video resolution uh, right now it's in F HD 30 frames per second that's for video capturing you can do HD 30 frames or FHD I don't know what the difference is uh, you can go through your sound options yes it has a microphone built in so you can do full sound it's not the greatest microphone but it works good you can set some pre auto exposure, color contrast, saturation, uh, sharpness, and gamma. And then you have a second screen for your clock, your date, a watermark, your language, frequency. It does do 50 Hertz PAL and 60 Hertz NTSC. That's for display and the video out. Uh, you can format an SD card. It has a micro SD card slot in the back. The 307, 407 and upwards also increase in price. They do have an HDMI out on the top that you can output to a larger television or whatever for your viewing pleasure. The buttons on the front, so M is menu button. This is going to be your digital zoom. Normal, two, four. Now, I don't like to use these buttons on the monitor because I bump this and the screen is adjustable I mean if you're working straight above you can rotate this you can you can turn it you know whatever you want to do but I usually just try and leave it in the front the OK button is going to start recording you can see it says rec a timer will go off and it tells you you're in 30 frames per second FHD video mode full screen and the battery is charged or charging it has a battery built in in case you don't want to use USB and have a battery I don't know click OK again it stops the video goes into standby the button to the right is to take a snapshot photo click it just blips for a second it'll be in your photos folder back on the remote you can also press a photo by hitting the button pow 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 it takes a click a quick clip if I press the mode button I can go down to photo and see the photos that I just took. If I go into normal folder, I can see the videos that I have took. This was on uh, the voodoo card that I posted a repair on of bent pins. So that's the uh, mode button up here. There's also this little uh, snowflake button. That's an image still. It locks the image so I could take the card out and still continue to look or work at something. Unlocking it will put it back to available whatever let me get that in focus a little better there we go uh, the buttons on here are zoom in and zoom out this is the brightness so you can turn that down or up the Hertz button is 50 Hertz or 60 Hertz when you record I don't think it does anything for the LCD display the plus button over here is gonna give you some OSD for you can put like cross lines so if you wanted a line for centering if you wanted a grid effect you could turn a grid effect on one by one you can customize the position the color etc that's the little plus button it also gives you a date and a time you can overlay onto these onto any recording you want these lights here on the bottom are fully adjustable and they are pretty daggone bright they provide very good uh, lighting even if I unplug them you still get a decent light from 
the camera's light itself, but why not have why not have all the lights you can? One more feature which I forgot because I forgot was there's a little knob right here that controls the ring brightness for the microscope light. So with no light on at all, this off and these guys off. Uh, you can still see it's a pretty bright display now. I do have some massive lights overhead. So with the original lights, just these lights on, you can see you can adjust brightness and focal points of light and whatever you want to get the maximum, uh, you know, lighting resolution that you need. And if you needed the microscope light on, you can just raise this up and with these two big guys, it's not, uh, you can move these out of the way. Sometimes I just kind of stick them up tall in case I am soldering. I can get in here and do what I need to do. The other cool features are you have the sharpness controls, the brightness controls, and the contrast controls right here. Um, the cool thing is this. I like this button. So you can reverse video it into a negative, and that's cool for checking out like solder points or tracing. So this is very tiny. Under the microscope on top of this via chip, you can see it clear. But I like using the reverse video to checking for solder points because it's sometimes hard to see. Are they making contact? Well, if you reverse negative it or negative video it, you can see a lot clearer on some things. You can see crap if there's anything on the chip. I, I use the negative a lot. Um, this button is color or black and white. Uh, you really can't see on something that was, there we go, black and white and color. And you also have default, which will default your stuff back to normal. But this button here, that's not labeled, is a rotate button. So let's put the VIA chip back up. If I hit this, I can rotate it. I bumped black and white. Put that back to color. There we go. So we can rotate it 180 degrees if you're working on another view or you need another angle, you can rotate it. Now how does it actually do? I think it performs pretty well. Uh, boot time is incredibly fast. It takes a micro SD card in the, in the slot. It just has a simple power, a battery charge level, and an SD card slot, and a reset switch. There is a cutout for an HDMI here. Uh, I've thought about taking some pliers and popping it open to see if you know it would have one circuit board design and just sold for different prices but so far so good I like it I've done a couple repairs like my 3D FX intense 3D voodoo card I had a micro pin uh, kind of cross because I tossed it in a box and then something else landed on top of it and I really can't see I put like this super duper nerd helmet on and then my glasses and then you're still like right up on it but when you can get right to the side of a chip and then do a digital zoom and then do a digital zoom on it and get right in there to see where you're working at and just for example this is a q-tip that's the head of the q-tip so you can get a gauge for how small this is this is a big pen that's the tip of a big pen so would be backwards and there's some flux and a piece of q-tip scuzz yeah it's a little weird working backwards but there we go so it works surprisingly well for what I uh, use it for and that's pretty much it it comes with a instruction book of course that tells you the basics of what things do uh, there was some assembly required meaning I had to screw in the uh, base with two screws on the bottom, insert the camera with two thumb screws, it came with a little Allen wrench, which I lost, and uh, that's pretty much it. Your plugs, it does come with a Euro slash Japanese, I don't know, charger, I think I threw it away, and I'm just going to use a NTSC North American regular two-prong polarized plug for me or right now it's actually just plugged into the Amiga XL and working fine 
and that's about it really it's it's nothing to it if you're looking for a inexpensive microscope uh, to do some repair work I mean this is the way to go this I got this on a site called bang good trust me it's legit site it's not like an adult site it's or like a Chinese eBay think of it as I'll put a link in the description below that Keith sent me that I actually purchased it from and anyway the instruction manual goes over everything that I basically went over here so we don't need that anymore oh and it boots like really quick so if I turn this off it's off if I turn it back on it should just say welcome and then it's on very fast boot time uh, there was a couple questions of lag or delay and I am way too zoomed out for that yeah I really need a clock but I could do the seconds maybe you can't really see I'll put it here four or five so you can kind of catch maybe the phone let me turn the lights off here so you can see the phone and the illumination now from my view it's not lagging that much I mean maybe a couple milliseconds of delay but you're not going to be you're not going to be going and working on moving things and if you are you are awesome I don't work on moving things uh, my stuff is pretty stationary and for my hand movements when I'm soldering there's no lag at all I mean if I put something under here it is you know pretty good I mean my minute movements are being picked up right away I'm barely moving it so I mean yeah it might have some lag for some super fast things but nothing uh, that's gonna drive you bonkers and if you're videoing you're gonna be moving slow anyway and it's doubtful that you're gonna be working on anything that is moving so that's all I got for now thank you for watching I hope this helps you and as always, I hope you learned something.